Okay. Uh, do, would anybody like to talk about anything on the agenda as part of the privilege of the floor? If not, uh, Lou, why don't we start with the reports from you down to your end? Okay. Uh, the only thing I can report on is that um, the storm has put a little dent in the trying to get back to doing blacktopping because you know we have a few roads that are on the uh, that were supposed to be blacktop, but right now, even if we can get to it, we got we don't even know if the people that are going to do you know, the reclamation on it are available because their schedules are all off. So that's the biggest dilemma that's facing the highway department. Um, every day it seems like there are other things that are popping up that have to be fixed and corrected that wasn't obvious at the beginning. So uh, other than that, the senior center is doing well. Rentals are down, and Dollar Bus always does great. So I don't really have a lot. I talked to Broderick beforehand, so. Good. Okay, Kenny? Yeah, I, I'm going to repeat basically what Lewis said. That this storm has made the water and sewer department guys crazy. They're working a lot of hours trying to catch up on road damage, front damage. And, uh, with the help of Brett, uh, the highway superintendent, they're making headway, but it's going to take a long time, a lot of damage, to as a result of that storm. Okay, George. Okay, the uh, joint rec report. Um, I'll get a copy to um, you, Priscilla, so you don't have to write all of this stuff down here. The Zumba classes are starting on the 27th, um, seven, 615 to 715 at the C.J. Hooker Middle School. Drama Kids is also starting on uh, Tuesday, the 27th. Adult uh, co-ed rec volleyball is going to be starting at the C.J. Hooker building on October 6th. And the events that are coming up, the annual Halloween event is scheduled for Sunday the 23rd at 1 p.m. at the Salesian Park. The 5K the Turkey Trot is scheduled for 11:19, And of course, you can always visit the website, uh, goshenrecreation.org, for more information and further information on any of those programs and other things that are happening. Uh, Still with JRC, there is a Friends of Goshen Parks that meets once a month. It's a new program, a new group that's starting to try and raise money for the parks. Anyone that's interested in doing that, that uh, I don't have the exact date, they move the date from back and forth, uh, but they meet once a month at the Village Hall at 7 p.m. We're supposed to be getting the budget. Uh, relatively soon and passing it on. We had a reorganization meeting and uh, Trish Sherlock was again uh, nominated as the chairperson for the JRC and Kevin Armistead is the uh, co, I should say co, it's the assistant uh, chairperson to uh, Trish Sherlock. That's JRC and then as far as insurance is concerned, uh, we have, uh, <coughs> we're getting new quotes from other organizations, um, other insurance companies, but what is common? Um, supplying information, getting information from uh, Jim and, and the Bob from upstairs, we're doing that today. Uh, we also are also getting further information together for the insurance quote for 2012. That's our general liability. And I would also stress, uh, I had a call today from an adjuster that wanted some information. Uh, and I just stress that it's very important that we uh, uh, give the insurance companies the right information. Case in point is, uh, I guess if it was flood damage, it's not covered at all, depending on where it is, and we have a $25,000 deductible. Whereas if it's a backup of drains and uh, pipes, <coughs> we have a $1,000 deductible, and most of it's covered. So uh, it's important to, I guess, say the right things to the uh, uh, adjusters. And I think that's uh, all I have as far as my reports. Good, thank you. <coughs> Bill? Well, with the police, uh, there's been very little activity, but uh, we did get a letter from the attorney for the PBA demanding a meeting so that we could talk about staff. Obviously, it was a uh, 
discourteous three-line letter, and uh, we responded, well, what do you want to talk about? Instead of so I'll give you more to come if you get another response, but we don't know what it's about. It's very curt, very short, and it's just not the way you do business. In any of it, in my opinion. As far as what we have been doing on the um, Finance scene, we've had a number of preliminary budget meetings. We have spent many, many hours. Uh, we are, and I'm sure Doug will elaborate, but we're very, very concerned uh, because the governor has announced a 2% cap and our medical insurance has gone up 14%, and our compensation <coughs> has gone up 6.6. All, all the expenses that are annual expenses have gone up, yet. Uh, we are capped at 2% or 1.6%, which is the uh, CPI. So uh, we did make a trip to Albany, and I, I think Doug will elaborate on that. Uh, fill it in yesterday. And we wanted to see what was going on and discuss this whole thing because we have a huge shortfall in the budget caps. And uh, I know that our town is probably two or three weeks ahead of the curve. We start, or we start early. And we don't know what the other municipalities are doing, but we're struggling with this budget. So uh, stay tuned. And, uh, that's what's yet to come. Good. Okay. Good. Well, the first thing I'd like to do is comment on uh, <coughs> the officers with joint recreation. How much? The uh, Chris Sherlock and Kevin, I can't give them enough credit for the just wonderful people giving them their time. To all the other board members out there as well. And uh, I was on the Joint Recreation Commission in 2005 and four, four five. And Kevin was there then. He'd been a long time to then. So they, these people put a lot of time, continue to put a lot of time. And uh, I think I, uh, they, they deserve our, our best. Um, there was a water line leak or break in Arcadia Hills last week. It was Thursday. Um, it occurred about 1 o'clock and they had it fixed and buttoned up by 7. And what it was is evidently 20 or 30 years ago there was a leak and they put a tourniquet on it and fixed it properly, but they put in steel bolts versus stainless steel bolts. <coughs> the steel bolts rusted through and things broke back open again. So it could have been avoidable, uh, avoided uh, if done right the first time many, many years ago. Um, we did go to Albany yesterday. And we, we've been talking to Senator Larkin and, and uh, Legislator A. Rabbit about the budget and our concerns. Um, to give you an example of what we're dealing with, okay, uh, the, the, how we're going to be at 2%. Is the state New York state law says two percent for CPI, whichever is lower. And as Phil alluded to, medical insurance is going to 14.2 percent next year. It's going to be approaching eighteen thousand dollars a month. These are eighteen thousand dollars a year per employee. So just opening the door, walking in, take all the employees we have. It's eighteen thousand dollars, seventeen thousand, whatever the number is. And so when you have something go up 14.2 percent, how do you get to 2 percent? The contract we have with the police for this coming year is 3.5 percent, plus a correspond wage increase, plus a 3.5 percent corresponding uh, benefit package. Or is this the, the holidays, the vacation days, no personal days? They all get 3.5 percent more next year. We uh, the workers' comp is going up 6.6 percent. And as we alluded to on Monday, we're doing well. We're only paying 88% of the premium because we've had such good performance. Some municipalities are paying 100%, some are paying 100 plus percent based on performance. So if you don't have injuries, your rates are lower. If you have injuries, your rates are higher. So 6.6%, even though we're doing better than we've ever done, we should at the 88% time. The uh, retirement, 
4.2%. And you go on and on and on, and none of them are approaching 2%. So what do you do? You have layoffs? Or you have furloughs? What do you do? Uh, and and uh, so, anyway, we've been working hard on this. And I'm going to tell you all, folks, we got it down to 2%. It's not a pretty picture. Not pretty at all. It's not pretty for the employees, and it's not pretty for the citizens. As one example, or a couple of examples, in highway, we have $125,000 in this coming year for equipment replacement. We had to take $100,000 out of it, so we have $25,000 to replace equipment with and complete our size. How do you do that? Uh, another one is we go. We have $350,000 in the budget to put down asphalt. And we had to knock it down to 160. Well, how do you get enough asphalt to cover 73 miles of road for $160,000 to do your maintenance, your annual maintenance? Well, if we follow the New York State law, we've got to do that. So Phil, who is a finance commissioner, and myself, we want to all we need to find out from straight from the shoulder. How are we going to do this, guys and gals? And I looked at three blank faces. The one guy excused himself from the meeting after about five minutes. He knew what he was talking about, but he had to go to a conference call. And the other two, I, we got information from them, but, it, but not the leadership I was looking for. Okay. So it is what it is. We're working hard on it. We're going to try to be as fair and equitable to everybody, employees and citizenry. And we'll just, but I have to agree with the state legislature and the governor. New York State is not competitive. Just go to other states and you'll find out how cost competitive they are. Well, we've evolved out of this line of evolution of high, 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 and we got to bring it back down. And you bring it back down, I guess, by starving us. And there's going to be a lot of squealing in the process. And I don't feel good about it. Okay. But we are working hard on it. And we're trying to get to be fair and equitable. Just, I'll, I'll just add to that, Doug. I mean, we might as well. What we understand is, or what we, we find out is, that this starving us, or really cutting us down so you can almost not exist, it, it appears that the master plan is to get the municipalities to merge. So there's no duplication of effort. And uh, this is a thing that's very, very difficult and very difficult for people to understand or want to do. People <coughs> just want to know what you're... But, but the governor apparently has really, and this is just the new information that we're getting, has really pulled up his trains and said, we want to merge municipalities. Well, <coughs> you have two DPWs, two police departments, two this, two that. You can cut out a lot of the duplication. In private industry, that's what they do. I'm not saying we're going to do it or not do it. I'm just telling you that it appears that the motivation at that particular point is for villages to merge with towns and probably ultimately towns to merge with counties. Now, I'm not giving you any facts, uh, but we talked to some of the legislators, and uh, this is what they're thinking the direction is. I'm pretty confident. So this is all new. This is a whole new new age. But you know what? Drastic steps should be taken and must be taken in order to get everything in line. People are losing their homes. People are losing their jobs. And uh, it's it's a very difficult situation that we're facing. And we'll do the best we can. Okay, thank you. Which leads, uh, we are, uh, uh, we're going to go to a new pulse. Uh, on the 3rd of October for some training by the state on this 2% cap. There are one or two things that we can, for example, exempt from uh, the 2% calculation. Uh, but, two, but many of them aren't. Like the 14.2% medical insurance, you got to swallow it, digest it, and deal with it. You know? And so we'll, we'll look at all of this. And, and, and we're talking to other municipalities, and we're just trying to ground ourselves as best we can. 
But what in essence it is, is the recession beyond coming to Goshen as it has all along. We're now probably getting the same uh, mode as some of the other states that have been having all the fisticuffs of over, you know, with the unions and everybody else and the uh, uh, school teachers and firemen and whatever, you know, like uh, Wisconsin and other places. I mean, it's kind of coming this way because New York truly is not competitive. Back about nine months ago, there was a company we had that was, uh, they had a code for it. They didn't tell us who they were until they turned us down. I mentioned this on Monday, but for the press today, I'll say the same thing again. Uh, we went out to a piece of property, and they want, this company was looking to build a one and a half million square foot building and create 1,200 jobs. It would have been in the town of Goshen. Well, and they looked at the cost of doing business in New York State, and they said, adios, and they went down to Berkeley County, West Virginia, and that building is well underway in construction, and they're taking applications for these 1,200 jobs. Why is that? I'm going to tell you right up front, because I'm still hosed off about this. Workman's compensation in New York has been out of control since. I was managing two private businesses for the DuPont Chemical Company, one in particular New York, and one in Danbury, Connecticut. Both of those plants, the company that I worked for, shut them down, moved them to Austin, Texas. You cannot, in New York State, have a labor-intense business, manufacturing business, and deal with workman's comp. It'll put you right out of business. Okay? Now, you can have a service or whatever it might be, but a real manufacturing facility with a lot of repetitive motion and whatnot, it's very difficult, unless you make a lot of profit like an IBM or some of those others. But any mom and pop business is very difficult. And until a state legislature gets a hold of that and a few other things, more of the same. When this board took the plaster of, uh, we're gonna live on a cash basis, we'll pay as you go or we don't go, and that's five years already. We have not borrowed any money, no debt. So the easiest thing for, you, for a municipality to do is you have a shortfall, you bond something, or you borrow it, or you raise the tax rate. But if you don't want to do that, then you, you talk about the uh, income and revenues that may not materialize, but you put them in there. But we have done none of that. And I want to tell you that this good thing, we are so far ahead of the curve financially. And if we're in, in, in crises, then we can't even imagine what other, the other municipalities have done. This whole board has been very fiscally responsive. We can't even imagine. People are going to run out of money. Uh, they're going to go after the budget year. In six, six months, they'll be out of money. So it, it's very serious. Yeah, what Phil was saying, we haven't borrowed money for operations. Right. We, we borrowed for, for a water line and a sewer and a water district. That's a special and, district. And, and then PDR, which people said you got to, you know, well, that's that one five years ago. But that was five or six years ago. But yeah, we've, we've paid off about a half a million dollars a debt a year for several years. It's dwindling down now because it's being paid off. And we owe less, certainly less than $4 million. And, uh, and they're probably, I, I don't think any other municipality can touch that kind of thing. Okay, the next thing is we, uh, Phil and I are also negotiating actively with the CSEA. And we made an offer. Yesterday. Yeah. Day, day for you. Day for you. Day for you. Yes, day. Okay. And, uh, and we'll see. I did talk to the union president of uh, negotiator today, and it's a tough sell with the employees. And I said, well, I understand that. Uh, but uh, we're, we're in this situation. We have to cut $855,000 of our budget. We only have a $7.5 million budget. To be a two percent, given what the bogey we're looking for, it's difficult. And if I didn't like this kind of stuff, you know, it would even be more difficult. I've budgeted every year all my life in private, and I just love doing it. So, and Phil's a financial guru; he knows about finances as well as anybody. And so, we're we're working on it. The uh, talk about the pursuit of what Kenny was saying, Lou was saying on the. Uh, Hurricane and then Lee after that. We had a sewage backup in 
the records room and also the pit below the elevator. And we didn't know it until we went by the point. That's that. We opened the doors. Oh my goodness. So we had several inches of raw sewage and whatnot in the basement. We pumped it out. We had the sewer company come and pump it out. We had Surpro come in and disinfect everything. And as luck would have it, the Christmas decorations were in the top shelf. The tax records were <laughs> at the bottom shelf of the soup. Well, at least we so, said Christmas. Well, we said Christmas. We're going to have a great Christmas. And, uh, but anyway, no, we get tax bills. Right. Tax. But anyway, we looked at the tax bills, and we have duplication in the county, so they're history. Yes, Santa Claus can't get taxed this year. Okay. So anyway, that's my – oh, I did go out and meet the governor this afternoon. He was out at uh, the Black Dirt area of Goshen on Maloney Lane. Uh, and talking to the farmers and, and a whole lot of raj of uh, municipal leaders and politicians and whatnot. But New York State was extremely uh, involved in the, the, super, the hurricane and the, the tropics thrown there after lots and lots of damage. And so it was worse. Goshen, the town of Goshen, other than the farmers, municipally, we, we've taken a lot of hits, but nothing compared to some municipalities. And we're going to talk later tonight, there's two culverts that were damaged to be $371,000 to repair them. FEMA gives us 75%, we've got to chip in the other 25%. That's on top of the 2% burden we've got. With, so I don't know how we're going to get it done, but we're, we're going to get it done. But we did have a lot of damage. And, uh, <coughs> Okay, the first entry item on old business is a set of public hearing for the request by James Dillon to rezone the curb property. Dennis, do you have anything on that at all? I, I do. I have a letter of correspondence, but I don't have a copy of the petition. Okay. The letter referred to it, but I don't, I don't have a copy. Yeah, we, I dropped five copies off. I have one copy. Not to me. No, the village. Okay. I mean, the, the, Okay. Why don't you lead us through this thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no problem. The public hearing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That won't anyway delay the public hearing. I just like to explain to the public what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay and 40% commercial office mixed use, and it's the desire of the uh, property owner to have the entire property zoned industrial. Yes. And I guess you already have a copy of this with the material I'm looking at no, now. No, I don't. I, have, I got I a copy of my box. Okay. 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 okay, but go ahead. Uh, and, and again, attached to the petition is, is a map. Or, you know, of the curve mm -hmm. parcel, which I assume yep. you have. We, we saw this. We saw it. Yeah, we saw it last week. Yeah, we saw it last week. So, you know, it, it seems to be all in order. It'll be, you know, again, uh, the property owner having subscribed to the application and the petition. Uh, the appropriate procedure would be to establish a, a public hearing, date at which time any interested parties, neighbors, etc., can come in and make comment if you want. Our next meeting is the 11th work session. The 11th of the 13th. Can you advertise work? it in uh, time for the 11th? Or should we go to the following day? What's the yeah, meeting uh, later in the week? Uh, 13th. 13th would be better because Val says we need a good three weeks to get it in. Okay. Okay. So, so we'd like to make a motion then. We set a public hearing for the request uh, to rezone uh, the Kirk property in Hartley Road for 7.30 or soon thereafter on the 13th of October, October 2011. So Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Public Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is the board going to send the application to the planning board? Because uh, they review it at the same yeah, time. No, 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 you make, yeah, we will forward that to them for comment. To You're also going to have a notification requirement to send the surrounding property. Okay. That's the applicant's response. If you would, just talk to Neil and yeah. make sure that he gets all what you want him to get and that the, the, the appropriate the mailings are sent out. Okay. Yeah, coordinate with Neil. Okay. Okay. And since our last discussion, is there anything new? Nothing new. 
Okay. Yeah. Basically, it was the same. same as I just filed mean. the petition. Right. Right. Okay. just didn't, I guess didn't get a copy. I dropped about five copies. Yeah, I think we got them the other day. Yeah. 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 But you dropped five off. You were too early. That was a problem. Yeah. It was too early. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that mail was desk from yesterday or the day before. Good. Okay. okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, Dennis, are we uh, ready at all on any of these texts, or should uh, I move no. on? No. Uh, okay. The short answer is no, but we haven't okay. seen the proposed judgment yet. But as the board is aware, Matrock and Excelsior are both settled. Right. We don't have the consent judgments and stipulations as yet. We'll do it on the 11th of October. Correct. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll get by the 11th. We certainly should have that. Okay. okay. But they're settled. They are resolved, right? Yeah. Okay. This next one. Uh, did you get the information from Mr. Sweeney? Yeah, we did. Both items four and five are uh, joined, if you will, and we have the materials as well as the planning board, you know, Kelly Norman's office and Rick's. Right. Uh, we're, we're in the process of reviewing them. They have not been signed all time yet. But then well, they, they will certainly be done by the I told you guys to be short meeting tonight. Now, will we be ready <laughs> by the okay. 11th? Yeah, because yeah, they're physically in hand. They don't even know. They appear to be all in order. It's just that there's probably 50 to 100 pages of. Uh, Rather detailed material, which we have to get okay. against maps, etc. Right. And uh, they appear to be in order, okay. uh, including, as you know, some provisions in those easements uh, to protect the people in Hamiltonian Park, etc. So it, we're presently reviewing them, and uh, the 11th, uh, certainly. And also so they expand, expanding the Hamiltonian Water District? Yes, I didn't think that was appropriate to <clears throat> obviously approve the easements. Right. Uh, right. Okay. I, have, I have a question about that. Okay. I think I have a question for Dennis, I guess. Um, apparently, it's now moved to the signing of the map when the money will be transferred to the town for water and sewer. Is that correct? That's correct. Right. Initially, it was going to be when we actually did this. Right. right. Oh, when yeah, well, the agreement had been which, signed. Which, yeah. which, you know, right. the sooner we get it, the better. The only thing is I want to make sure is, is that when the map is signed, whoever signing that, was that chairman of the planning board? Correct. Mm -hmm. Remember that? That they have the checks there. Yes. That day, yeah. that it's yeah. part of the yeah. signing of the maps. So that these two checks written out to the town of Ocean are delivered that day. It's not like, well, we'll, get, we'll get it right. to you. Checks you know, in the mail. Because I, I'm concerned about what's going to happen long term with this particular yeah, I agree. project. And I think the board appreciates it. That's also one of the reasons why, again, you're not doing resolutions tonight, right. and easements, et cetera. Because uh, they're making progress, certainly, in you know, performing their punch list and completing the requirements of planning board. I just don't know if they're moving the law due alacrative speed. And again, we're seeing to it that they are. But yes, a right. point well taken. Right. Good. Similar to a closing on a house or something, right? Yeah. Sure. Check step before you get checked. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Keys to the house. Yeah. In yeah. fact, I would, I would almost, if you think about it, you, as you know, they've appeared here many times. I, I would think there's really no reason why they can't be ready with all this stuff. In October. Now, I don't know what their plans are or their timeline is. But well, I, I talked with Neil about the uh, signing of the house, and there will be a next right. year list of things to contain. He, right. he said they're working on it, and he said it's not too far from the signing of the house. That's my understanding. Now, the the reason why I'm really anxious to get that water district approved because that's the one that's got to go to the health department for right. review. Right. And right. I don't know, is that going to hold up signing? It probably will. Uh, minimal. Okay. Well, well, you can see the health department knows it's coming. The health department knows that there's going to be an expansion of the district. Right. And they've been, you know, affirmatively told that it's a fait accompli other than the formality. Right. And they're ready to review. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. No, every, again, I'm not in any way criticizing the applicant. Or no, the I'm not. Either. It's just, you know, they have things to do. If they would just do that, we could get sure. this thing buttoned up. Gotcha. But it's their time. Well, that's why I can get up shorter meetings if they just finished up. Well, this is pretty short tonight. Yeah, well, 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 what they want to be short. Yeah, it's their timeline. You know, Would someone like to make a motion uh, to approve the minutes of work sessions of August 22nd and September 6th and the regular meeting of August 25th? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any addition to corrections to the minutes? Yes. Um, I have two. Uh, I think they're minor, but since, uh, Dennis, you uh, addressed this issue at our last meeting, I think it's important. Uh, on the minutes of the 25th, uh, we went into executive session for PD personnel. You had said that PD personnel is not sufficient. It has to be a specific name. So I or or our title, or, job title. Or, or, or job title. Okay. More detailed than that. Right. So um, I, I think that was chief of police. 
It was. It was. It okay. was so designated. Right. Yeah. And the, so that should be added. That should replace the one. To the 25th. And then on the 22nd, same thing. PD right. personnel, chief of police. Right. Okay. Good. Good. Mr. Okay. George. Good. Any other additions or corrections to the minutes? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Under new business, this pursuant to what I was talking about with the uh, Hurricane Irene and, and the Tropical Storm Fleet, Hartley Bridge, I mean Hartley Road, uh, really should be Culvert and Coleman Road Culvert Repairs. You can see in your packet here from Sean Hoffman and Dennis Lindsay to me, um, well it says Hartley Road Bridge and Coleman Road Culvert. Um, if you go down to the repair costs, uh, FEMA estimate for repairing it is $371,411.03. The FEMA Public Assistance Program provides supplemental reimbursement for the repair and restoration of the infrastructure. Reimbursement is generally 75% federal, 25% non-federal local share. So, uh, the local share is typically split, split between the New York State and the municipality. We have briefly discussed the funding with Highway Superintendent Knoll and believe it may be possible for the town to use the force account right. of labor and equipment, excavating, hauling, and traffic control, and so yeah. forth, to cover our 12.5% share. Yeah. So basically, this is informational only. I told my review with you tonight. I don't see any um, option for us other than to fix these things. Except this, this culvert, um, if you look at the picture in there on, on uh, Hartley Road Bridge, I mean, it's, it's, well, they're all pretty dreadful looking things. And uh, they have to be fixed, okay, as far as I can see. Um, on the Coleman Road culvert, that was a great big culvert that we yeah, did last year. Yeah, last yeah. year. No, that wasn't last Isn't year. It? Here's it's the it, it was three. No. Time flies. Yeah, it was. Okay. Anyway, it was actually built right huge. there. Anyway, oh, the, yeah. recently took. the water went underneath the bottom. This culvert has got a horseshoe type of thing on top with a metal bottom. And the water went under the, the bed of this thing, washing it out so the culvert is twisted. And this, I mean, it's big. It's huge. It's I don't see it's tall as the room, but it's big. It's the size of a two-car garage. The height is about 10 feet. Yeah. The length is about 25 to 30 feet, and the width is probably close to 20 feet. Yeah. That's how big it is. Now, now, Dennis, we don't need a motion on this to authorize it. No. Okay, fine. Was I was just kind of informational that, uh, you know, it's one of those things where you put money into something that was already done once. George? Yes, but I just wanted to comment on this, please. I, I didn't have an opportunity to, to really study it. Okay. But uh, the 371411, yeah. the, as I read it quickly, it, it seemed like that was just Hartley Road Bridge. Is it? You see, I didn't read all of this. So yeah. if, it's, if it includes you know, all of the things, if that's the figure, there was also a third issue there, and I know there are some constituents that have come in to our meeting, mm -hmm. and that was uh, specifically named the unnamed tributary, which is on that's, age two. Oh, that's uh, run, and uh, run, run, run creek. Yeah. Right, the okay. 1,200 linear f uh, foot portion. So mm -hmm. I guess what I'm asking the question is, is you know, are they basically saying that we should be applying to FEMA for all three of these things, including the uh, unnamed uh, tributary to the outkill? Because there's pictures in there at all. Uh, as I said, I didn't have a, a chance to study it completely. No, but, I didn't uh, either. I mean, it came in late today. Right. And we had, I, I, uh, what I, I did talk to Sean, and he said there was, you can see it here on page five. Right. There's a tree or something we can snag out of there. He was not looking to do much beyond that kind of thing when he talked to me. There's just no dredging, there's no, yeah. no, no major work on this one I, I, think, I think George Ford, this is well taken though, if you look at the Coleman Road culvert and the repair right. summary, they do uh, recommend uh, a review with FEMA, et cetera. Right. It just yeah. has no dollar amount. Right, it has no dollar amount. I mean, I think, as George analyzed, I think those comments apply to each and every one of those projects. They should right. be FEMA qualified. Right. 
And oh. the first the estimate, 371, is just for Hartley Road. Mm -hmm. Except well, if you're not sure, no. because no. it says the it was fee public assistance program provides supplemental reimbursement no. for the repair so. and restoration of infrastructure. Right. But the, I don't know. But there's no further re uh, recitation on repair costs throughout any I, of the other. I, I but we're talking about infrastructure. I understand. As, I, yeah. I think they're right. I think this is inclusive. Yeah, I, I, it's yeah. all infrastructure, well, and then they break it down. Only based on what it costs to so put it in. That's what I said. I think when we get to the I'm thinking about 90,000 moose at about 70. No, no, the, the Coleman, Coleman no, no, Road. Well, the hot new ones. Yeah, well, I was talking about Coleman. Okay. Because I was talking about 90,000 dollars. Okay. okay. My recollection. Coleman was the, the actual yeah. culvert, was about 72. We got a grant on that, yeah. so and that was built on site. I think it was 72. Mark gave us a grant. Well, anyway, we will have to get up for Sean on this. But I, but I think that in terms of the one vote one tributary, uh, when I talked to Sean in the hall, he was talking just about staying in trees and things like we're not going to go out there to raise the saw trees and all those things. It, it really it comes yeah. down to a, a lot of the time and the effort that the DPW has, right? It, it comes down a lot to the time that, that the DPW has in order to do these things because, you know, they basically have full-time jobs doing what they have to do every day. Mm -hmm. However, the positive thing of that is it looks like, if I'm reading this correctly, that there wouldn't have to be out-of-pocket monies spent by the town because the 12.5% that's all our responsibility could be done by force account. Yeah, yeah. Labor. So if we could combine these types of things and do, you know, some of the... Well, that's what we did last great. time when we yeah. had grants. Yeah. We're trying to grant that we did it with our own people. Great. The, uh, but anyway, but this just shows the magnitude of what is been broken. I mean, this is just two. We had many, but one, one hole on Poland Road took 200 tons of stuff to fill it in inside. I was going to say, Doug, I mean, I, I don't know what it costs to fix co um, what's the name of the Hartley? Oh, no, well, they're, they're me out on this one. Oh, Arcadia Hills. Oh, Cotton Town Road. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right here. Yeah. The, 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 that might call John, John, John Johnson Lane. Right. I don't know what it took and how much dirt they had to put in, but they did a tremendous job. That must have been a tremendous cost. That's oh. just one. Yeah, road. One road. That way, the whole road, it was gone. They did fix it. Just paid right. it. Very good, did a great job. Well, I don't know this, but it's going well, to happen. One, one of the things, well, it's going to hit, and this is one of the things our concerns why we went yeah. to Albany yeah. yesterday is we we've spent a gazillion dollars yeah. repairing yeah. things when Irene came through, and then Lee came through a week later, or whatever it was, and did it all and did it for the most part. And we had to do it again. And so, uh, and they're still working on it. Still working on making sure the roads, the integrity of the roads are such that uh, school buses and all of us can yeah. be on uh, safe. A great job. Yeah. Okay, well, anyway, this is just information for us anyway tonight. It seems like we've got some questions as to what's included in what, and we'll certainly work through that. And, and uh, Lou, if you could get with uh, uh, Roderick and make sure that it's, he understands what, what it is and is, you know, in this letter. And, we get it more money accordingly. Okay, very good. Um, the next item is under finance. Would someone like to make a motion to authorize the supervisor to pay accounts payable check run of uh, September 7th, September 20th, both 2011, amounting to $152,612.62, and accounts payable check run of uh, the 22nd of September 2011, amounting to $272.570.78. So moved. A oh, second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. So now we can open for privilege of the floor. Anybody talk about anything they'd like to talk about? Step right. Joel wants to get the picture. No, no. There you go. Excuse me, Joel. 
My name is Kathleen Petrovic. I live at 8 Meadowbrook Lane. When Irene came through my backyard and several of my, um, several of my neighbors got flooded out as well. Um, I understand what you're saying with the budget and the monies and the DPW, but quite honestly, um, in the short run of it, is that I'm a taxpayer, as are all my neighbors. I know that there's issues. Everybody's going through a tough time at this point. Um, but quite frankly, I'm really pretty tired of hearing about the resources and the DPW's busy. And it makes us residents feel like we're not important to this town, like we're secondary, um, and that there are so many other more important things to do. The truth of it is that every resident in this town makes up the town. We all deserve something. We all deserve respect. And we pay taxes. And we came to this town because we were told that it was a good family town, that people were nice, they had a good education system. And I moved up here approximately six years ago. And let me tell you something. In those past six years, boy, did I get an eye-opening experience. At least where I came from, even though there were situations and issues due to budgetary cuts and so on and so forth, the residents were always taken care of and not treated as second-class citizens. And I don't know if it's just the way it's coming across, but it seems that my neighbors feel the same way. And I understand that you're working on things and whatnot. However, it's the attitude that comes across that's really negative and that people within the town do get frustrated with. Um, and it's, it's really a shame because everybody before I moved up here had told me what a great town this was. And to be quite frankly with you, over the past two or three years, I'm not experiencing that. And if I could sell my house and move right now, I would. Because this is not the type of town that I want to live in and have my daughter grow up in. Um, again, I, I know there's situations. I know there's budgetary cuts. I know there's a lot of things going on. But you know what? You don't treat the people who pay taxes and the people who live in the town as second-class citizens. It's just not right. It's just not right. And that will carry with people more so than the good because if you, something's good, you tell one person. If something happens that's negative, people tell 100 people. And then the bad reputation gets out. So, I mean, and now tonight we're supposed to get at least three or so more inches of rain, which means that I'm probably going to get flooded out again. I know you have to do your thing and work through your processes and whatnot, but at this point, if I could do something myself, if I could go to the government myself, if I could clean the creek myself, if there was anything that I could do so that I know for in fact that things would get done, I would do it because I just don't have the trust in this town or the people who work for this town to get things done. And I really don't think it's fair. And I know that tomorrow morning when I wake up, if we get all this rain, I am going to be flooded out once again. Okay, thank you for your comments. Anybody else? Jerry, hmm? please. Well, you don't have to. I mean, you're loud enough. Every time I hear Hartley Road, it's like a toothache to me. I can remember back when Frank Romano sat up here, and Hartley Road became an issue due to the condition. Frank went out there with one of our attorneys. This is when All Waste had that operation. And if I can recall the figures right, they wanted the town to kick in, I believe, $80,000 to repair that road. And Frank and I discussed it. And I said to Frank, I wouldn't give them 80 cents. They destroyed the road. That road is in now the same condition. I was through there the other day. And when you bring up this uh, issue about the culvert, well, I'm wondering how much damage was done by those trash trucks coming and going over that particular area. Because this is exactly what happened, and I was the one who brought it to the town board's attention that they were running these trucks from Harness Estates loaded up with shale. I don't know if anything was done with Harness Estates to attempt to get them 
to pay any kind of funds because I'm sure they had something to do with the, the destruction and the collapse of the Coleman Road. But that's past history. They're not doing it anymore. My other question is, how is the enforcement going with the garbage trucks that are going into IWS? I see different names on different trucks now that I've never seen before. I think Absolute Carding was one. Well, I'm just wondering if they're not just changing the names as they do in the garbage business. And are they applying? Have we had any new applications? And what is the enforcement? How much enforcement has been done by the police department for unlicensed carters? I know that's a lot to digest. So, Priscilla, can you on uh, that second question? Since you give issued the uh, permit, I I don't know what the police department end of it is. Right. But in the town clerk's end, we do issue the licenses to the carters, and I must say a lot of them are very cooperative. If they change trucks or take a truck off the road, I had one today. It was uh, I forgot the name of the group, but they they. They took a truck off the road and wanted to redo another truck. I issued them another license. They, they cooperate with our office. And I believe that's probably stemming from maybe pressure from the police department, so they don't want to get a ticket. Whatever goes on, I don't know, at that other end. As of this date, we have sold $14,750 worth of licenses to Carter and Haulers. Last year we sold 15,849 and change. And the reason for the drop in that was two businesses sold out. They couldn't afford it anymore. They dissolved their companies. And another couple just felt they weren't going to be here enough to merit getting the license. But that's all I can speak to. That's up from zero. Or that was up from zero until you brought the issue to us. So. Well, it's amazing. Any other board I brought that up to, they all looked at me like, uh, well, what? Well, that's what we call but there is a money flow here, and we are in tight. We are in a tight situation for money, and this is a way to get money because I'm sure we are not getting a lot of the licenses, licensees that are coming and going, because you'll have some that perhaps run off from '84, dump, and then back out again. I can say this about the police. I know they stop trucks. Uh, they were stopping trucks the other day on a road that they had permission to be on, but they said, you're not supposed to be on this road. We had an emergency oh, thing yeah. from the executive, uh, county executive. The Texas trucks and other, other trucks that were going to Texas place for, for uh, materials. So I do know that they stop trucks when they see them. Okay? And these placards that are on these trucks are pretty visible. They see a garbage truck anywhere around there doesn't have this black or not, they're going to pull it over. And I know they have. And that's chase early on, it chased people in to get their uh, their license. So uh, without being definitive and giving you numbers, I don't know what they are. I don't want to tell you more than I know, but I know they have been doing it. Uh, well, I, I think it would behoove, behoove the police department sure. to every once in a while do perhaps what we call a fixed post. Right. Okay. And as these trucks come in, to dump, and they're in there, in and out of there every day, and, and there's a lot of them. Right. This is perhaps a, a an area we could look into right. for finances, not only for the police department, the budget, and you know the town general fund as well. Now, going back to your first question, <clears throat> Interstate Waste approached Robert Noel, talking about going a joint venture to work on that road. This is a little bit back before the This is the same act that they did with Frank. No, this was, I mean, they approached him versus approaching anybody else and mm -hmm. said, okay, can we can leave? So, I don't know, I know Broderick right now is buried in other things, but I think this is on his, his agenda. One thing about Broderick, he puts, writes everything down, works down the list, it will be looked at. But I, I, I wrote it down here to remind us that my position would be this as a taxpayer. Okay. I don't think we should give them anything. They are the ones that are destroying this road. There is big trucks every day in and out, in and out holes. And I, I also said this to Frank. 
I, I as a town taxpayer, object to this. Because so all I'm doing is help them fix their road to get access to their dump. Well, you want to be a good neighbor? They weren't a good neighbor when they refused to give us tipping fees. That's still somewhere off. Didn't Mr. Uh, I can't remember his name right now. Didn't he tell us they would consider it? Well, you know what? I would consider perhaps you should fix the road. Not you, no, IWS. I wrote your comment down. We have approached that too, which was in the past. Because I don't think they're good neighbors, in my own opinion. At one time, they had volunteered, or that was part of the negotiation that they were going to fix the road. But then they backed off of everything the tipping fee, the fixing the road. And frankly, that's almost a private road. So I understand where you're coming from. You're correct. From. Absolutely. Yeah, very few cars use that. Absolutely. They come in the other way because of the roughness of the road. But I think they're getting interest in the fact it's too rough for their own vehicles. And, uh, yeah. Oh, I hope oh, they don't break the axle. That's what that it would is. be terrible. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. Now they're starting. Right. 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 Thank you for your time. I will give you a to figure out where we go. Thank you. Jerry? Is information on this project available? Will it be available at the What project? The clerk's, this care on Hartley Road. Oh, the the zoning change? So people know. The zoning change? Yeah, yeah. We've got the information. So it'll be a public hearing. Will there be a public hearing? She'd like to put it in the paper. Well, I mean, you should read it before the public hearing. Get with Priscilla, she can get it to you. Is there anything further, just the zone change? Just the zone like change. What they're anticipating doing? Well, part of the petition we cited is they have, uh, they have the mulching compost. compost business. Yeah. yeah they, they are operating a place in New Jersey now. And they're looking to display yeah. that place in uh, their operation up to this particular area. And most of that area is zoned industrial. It's like almost an appendage that. Isn't that's the parcel that they would like? It's out of the way, uh, and it's a rateable. It's a very it's a chase rateable. How many acres? Very small. It, it'll be in the. I, I, we they yeah. came here yeah. a week ago or more. But I think what you'll find is it's adjacent to the Owen uh, and R. It's all industrial out there. It, it, it's a rather well. Is this that piece of property as you go across the bridge to the left to the right? There's a for sale sign. I think it says 38 acres. Could be. Yeah, I knew the guy along that before. He had a little, he had a little flowers type of thing or nursery <laughs> curve. Who's in our gardens? Pardon? Who's on gardens? Yes, yes. I know. Yeah. Anyone know that too? Absolutely. Yeah, Luzon. John Luzon. Right. Right. We'll go. We'll go to the Italian in there. This is saying on on Cumbersheet, we have 31.18 acres. Not bad for an old man. It's only seven off. But anyway, the information on that is in the in the so Is this owned by IWS now? No, no, no. no, no. It has nothing to do with IWS. It has nothing to do with IWS. Well, those, but the Kerr family owns it now. Okay. And uh, Mr. Dillon is the engineer representing the potential buyer who who wants to buy it and put this business on it. And so he's got to get rezoned to be in a position to do that. They reviewed it with us and it just seemed to make sense. They were here at a meeting. Discuss the whole operation. Okay. Very little use of the infrastructure. I mean, it's Joel? You know, it's really he turned it off on me. Oh, oh thank you, Jerry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Excellent. Just plug it into the wall. <laughs> Just for whatever it's worth, uh, you may not have caught it today that the House voted down uh, the continuing resolution for funding for free money. Yeah. Uh, the Republicans are playing politics with the FEMA fund there. Yes. Okay. And uh, I'm sure that will play out, but as of right now, they don't have the money to uh, complete their obligations. When the uh, governor was here today, he talked about a billion dollars worth of damage in New York State. And uh, the state came up with 15 million for the farmers. And uh, it's just tokenism, and he said it. It's going to take federal money to do this and put it back the way it needs to be. For okay. otherwise, a lot of farmers will not be able to uh, recover. So well, it is a serious problem. Could could, could you, you give us an update on the um, status of the negotiations on the uh, IMA and the arbitration? 
I'll let Dennis from a legal perspective. Yeah, they're, they're progressing. Yeah, we're still engaged in it. I mean, we're, I think we're making progress, and we hope to be able to resolve it sometime in the not too distant future. He's getting close in hand. Yeah. I, I got the feeling from the meeting the other night that uh, there's actually an IMA that's beginning to take shape. That's is, fair to say. Is that fair to say? Mm -hmm. Details are now is it is it also fair to say that uh, all of the issues are interlinked at this point and will only be resolved as a package? Not only. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, universal only. settlement, as I refer to. We just hope that's what's going to be. That's what they're yeah. looking at. That's what we're yeah. working. Yeah. yeah. But the arbitration is not for the universal settlement itself. That's it correct. We would like to. We would like to do it. We would like to do it. Everybody's on board, but. You know, could still be solved in piece in pieces yes. if it had to be. It's, that's yeah. also true. Okay. And could you also? Um, I'm hoping by October 11th or 13th that we're going to have something to yeah. share with the public. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we'll yeah I mean, certainly yeah. October would not be unrealistic. I mean, I think that yeah. it's maybe that close. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. E excellent. Very happy news. Um, could you say anything about that situation that I referred to Monday night with the uh, the drainage covered across the uh, right. old mini sink? Right. I, I, the woman involved, the lady, Gail, wanted me uh, to call her back, and I said we would discuss it here. And I called her back with the information that I gleaned from our meeting. So it's, it's between her and the village, from my perspective. And... Um, but in essence, in essence, uh, uh, the records that she has don't sh share any studies or whatever of the village. Those buildings that were going on in the village, the new subdivision, whatever they were built, putting that water onto her property. And that is, uh, it's what they call artificially directed. In other words, if you've got a stream coming through your property, that's the way Mother Nature does it. But if I build a subdivision adjacent to your property and I artificially take all my runoff and put it in your property, that's that's an issue. Right. That and then the other issue is is the uh, raw sewage that was getting into that going over onto her property. So. Well, that's what I was issues. curious about that as to whether or not the town was going to get involved <laughs> in the issue, involved. or it if this is going to be a private. Um, we is village water, village sewage, and. It just happens to run under a common road where the middle half is ours and half is theirs. Which was put in there by the village. Right. Uh, I went out there tonight just before the meeting began, and I remember when I was on the board the last time, they had the tremendous uh, uh, water coming down those streets right where they put that pipe, and it would back up, and the whole thing would ice up, and it became a very, very big hazard. And it, was, it went on for a number of years. But it was a very dangerous situation. So I think that's how the village cured the problem. They pointed the water in a different direction and, and sent it someplace else, and that was the cure. You know, but, but you know, I think the sewers and stuff was really the issue now. But that is. Smells like litigation to me, right. but. Uh, I don't know. That's yeah, how I mean, I, I think that if there's a common head prevail, they can yeah. work this out. Yeah. But you know, it's like everything yeah. else. Uh, people. I, I found it uh, just very interesting from from a, a legal point of view as to what the relationship of the two municipalities was. Uh, you know, I'm learning something every day. So. Yeah. Meaning that there was no dialogue. I'm sorry. Meaning that there was no dialogue. No, no. It's, it seems that that uh, there, the, your your boundary line runs right down the middle of the yeah, road. Yeah, it's you, you've got F, as what amounts to effluent from one municipality being piped into another, and That's I right. don't know, you know, I'm ignorant of the law here. Right. I was very curious to see where uh, this would come out. Well, I think, I truly think that if that family will deal with the village and one or maybe the mayor, and they can kind of work this thing out. Yeah. But There must be precedent they, for this sort of thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. then it's, it's absolutely uh, actionable by the property owner. It's actionable. Uh, okay. Yeah, I would think. Can't have sewer dumped in property. property. Right. right. Yeah. I would think. So, uh, in, in my mind, effectively, because I went out there too. Yeah. And I've been out there. Well, yeah. what, what must have happened here is there was an existing pipe. The pipe failed in some way, shape, or form. And a new pipe was put in. 
And of course, no. now with no, that's one thing. They, 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 they're, con they're contesting oh, that. Well, assertion. I thought there was a from my, from no, my memory. Right. And from my okay. memory, is they put a pipe in to alleviate a problem. That's right. The village put it in. But before that, there was a problem because there was no pipe. Right. So, so, so now if they put in a new pipe into that area, the other one must have failed. And potentially, yeah. maybe that's what the village is contending. Maybe, maybe they put in a bigger pipe, and of course, on top of that, you know, we had the hurricanes, so we had the influence from the sewer, and now you have a mess. Well, as I say, it's an interesting question right. whether, whether or not any municipality has the right to direct water onto private property. It's not just Valley, though, it's any property owner. The yeah. case law is absolutely crystal clear. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I don't know what. The maps show. I don't know what the village has done historically, but approvals they obtained, etc. But you cannot artificially divert water so as to impact a neighboring property where it might do damage. I don't care if it's a municipality or an individual. You can't do it. They're very common most most neighbors. Yeah. You know, you come in, you blacktop your driveway, you yep. dig a ditch, you plant trees. Again, depending upon the ramifications, you've got to be aware of what happens with the runoff, etc. And you cannot do that. It's, it's, they call actionable. Okay. Or a legitimate yeah. lawsuit if the parties cannot resolve it. Yeah, I would say. Right. Okay. Well, I, I got yeah. one other question. Sure. It's interesting what you brought up before about uh, Governor Cuomo and, and his remarks about consolidation. No, it's not his remarks. We've got, and it was from Phil, we've been discussing with the legislators and the peers, okay, that with this 2% tax cap, because they believe New York State is not competitive mm -hmm. with other states mm -hmm. to bring in business. And if we could sell our homes, we'd be out of here tomorrow. Okay. Taxes at the school level, county level, state level, town, village, whatever, fire departments, it's all crippling. And it's geometric progression. When you start compounding, you don't have to go out too many years and say, well, you know what? It's over. They're beginning to see that. And so they're saying is by putting this cap on, it's going to force our hands to live within a certain amount and take draconian steps to live within 2%, which will then perhaps force municipalities to merge together to eliminate. You can no longer clip and snip. Like, oh, well, that person's retiring. I'm not going to backfill them. That's not going to cut it. You're going to have to eliminate maybe one whole board and one whole member of leadership and one whole list and yeah. one building and 16 cars and, you know, this, then all of a sudden you're going to get real savings. And we will let this is a leave. subject that I discussed with Bob Weinberger four or five years ago right. that the former mayor Weinberger believed that there was a plan afoot in Albany, in the legislature, to combine all of these different uh, townships, perhaps hamlets, villages, into one government, right. maybe being run by the county. Mm -hmm. right. And what this produces, this is what Bob and I had discussed, right. this was his thought, it produces a centralization of government mm -hmm. where you, the town of Goshen, you lose control because now you're going to be governed by perhaps two bodies, one being the county, if that's the way it goes, yeah. or the legislature in Albany. Right. So it makes it much easier for those two identities to force on us their edicts. And it takes this out of existence. Exactly, that was my next. Yeah. And it does away with home rule. I don't like it. It has a bad smell to it. Yeah. Well, I mean, and a lot of people, I know when I went out to getting petitions to get on this fall's uh, uh, ballot, one person that I went to said, I want you to understand, I want my village. Oh, that's right. I, I said, hold on, listen, I'm not saying not one way or the other. I'm willing to pay for it. Well, this person maybe has the money to pay for it. Right. There are other people who said, you know, I can't, I can't. You put one more burden on me financially, either from the fire department, the sewer, the water, the town, the village, the whatever it is, the library. I can't pay one more cent or I'm going to have to move out and I can't afford to move out because I can't get the equity out of my home. Well, 
if we have people, a lot of people, folks? But if you were a centralized government, that's not going to change. Oh, no, I, oh I, can't, I can't even discuss it, it you know, intellectually because I don't know what they've got in mind. I haven't seen any plan or anything else. All we're saying is, is that this could be an issue in New York because this cap, New York state law, is is uh, there just like this three hundred and seventy one thousand dollar bill. Well you know if you gotta put twenty five percent with it or whatever it is, ten percent with it, where is it coming from? Yeah. Now, we do have a lot of duplication of effort and we can and we you know we've got joint recreation, we've got the joint senior center, we've got things like that. And they're working well. But uh, there, there are other things that are kind of the untouchables. No one can go there. All right, DPW and a police block. Mm -hmm. That's right. Sure. That's right. Yeah. And uh, but anyway, you know what now? What we know, and we don't know yeah. a whole lot, except the two percent cap is going to be something to really give a lot of thought to. Not the cap itself, but how we can live within that and still provide the services that people want and deserve <coughs> at the same time have a workforce that's, that can afford to stay here as well. I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a balancing act. Is, is there a difference between the municipalities and the schools in terms of the process that's necessary to override the cap? Well, we're going to this course on the 3rd of October, and after that I can tell you that I think, yes, there is a difference. We, for a municipality, don't, don't quote me on this, but you have to create a local law you have to have a public hearing that would allow this board to vote beyond the 2% cap. And if we got 60% of the board to vote for that increased amount, then it would be the budget. With the school system, it's my understanding, is the public in general will have to approve anything above the 2%. But, I, but again, I'm, I'm just, this is what I've heard in the street and what I gleam in front of. I don't know if anybody else on the board can reflect on this or not. And have the same information that uh, you you have to establish a law first. Right. right. To establish a law. Well, I believe Doug, it's mm -hmm. Albany that has made us less competitive yeah, for these big companies, companies with the laws they've enacted, yeah. with the tax structures. Oh, right. But somehow, Supervisor Newhouse in the town of Chester, he's been able to figure a way out. He has brought, and his predecessor has brought in major companies, CNS. Pep boys, and they do. They, they got another outfit coming in. How is he doing it? Somebody ought to sit him down and say, Steve, could you tell us how you're doing it? One of the things well, is, is that was there before you ever got there. Long before. But, but let me hear one. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, Jerry, some of them were. Oh, yeah. Jerry, it was an I can tell you, in the town of Goshen, yeah. we're 52 percent tax exempt. Yeah. That means 48 percent of us pay the trade. No, we can't even get a. We can't even get a supermarket. And all these politicians, oh, I'm going to get to supermarket, and everybody sits there and gets elected. But it's not their well, job. What do we got, a bodega? But, but Jerry, that's not their job. It's not the job of government to bring in the oh, supermarket. Yeah. No, it's, it's not. Free market. Oh, the oh, 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 what are you taking me on? Yeah. What's the matter with you? <laughs> okay, well, anyway, it's yeah, a great discussion. <laughs> if you're still, hey, if you're still <laughs> part of the model, the way we will yeah. to yeah. we'll continue. Yeah. Okay, well, folks, thank you very much. <laughs> Would someone like to make a motion? We adjourn the meeting and go to executive session to discuss the status of sewer arbitration negotiating of the new IMA. And discuss the steps of CSA negotiations. So the more. intent not to return. Second. Okay. Second. 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 You could never say sexualized government. Oh, I, do I? All in favor say aye. Aye. I said you, you could never do this under sexualized That's government. Okay. Well, you know what hoses me off though? Yeah. When I went to Albany, uh, is that.